Uh, welcome back from the break. And uh, one of the things uh, before we go into our next caller, I want to put up a uh, uh, thing on the bottom of the screen. You'll see kpvm.tv slash programming and uh, then put in the independent doctors of Pahrump and then you will be able to take you to, I think it's to the YouTube channel where we have all some of the previous uh, programs that are on there. Uh, so if there's one you miss or you might want to go through there and find that um, uh, stuff on there and it might be worthwhile telling your friends or uh, if they, they can't watch it, that gives you a chance to uh, see some of the reruns. And I think sometimes they actually rerun the run the uh, shows here uh, later during the week, the ones that are live. Anyway, Roxanne, are you on the phone? Roxanne? Mm, hold on, Roxanne. Uh, listen to what you have to say. Um, I, I have what Ray has, <laughs> and I have I'm the yellow, and so Roxanne, that means it's bacterial. Uh, and um, can, can you hear me all right? Can you hear okay. me all right, Dr. Reiner? No, we're trying to figure this out. Um, lost some of the speaker thing, so anyway, um, while we try to figure this out, we'll just uh, continue uh, on with uh, maybe our producer will take the question and then I can answer it uh, that way. Uh, and so we were talking about uh, hypertensive crisis and hypertensive urgency. Hypertensive urgency would be an elevated blood pressure in 170, 180. Hypertensive crisis um, would be basically you're starting to show some signs of uh, neurologic deficits and obviously there's an, the end point which is a stroke. Um, and uh, truly those can be uh, admissions to the intensive care unit where they can give you IV medications to lower the blood pressure to try and, and prevent that from happening. Um, so when we check our blood pressure, and we should do that re routinely, uh, periodically, especially if we have some symptoms, and what might be symptoms of elevated blood pressure, there might be certainly a pounding in your head, there might be a red face, there might be nasal congestion, uh, anything that our, our vessels are dilated, uh, we might see pulsing, we might feel uh, a headache. Any of those things might be a good reason to go ahead and get your blood pressure checked. And obviously you should do it regularly because it is such a silent uh, destructure of our, of our tissues. Obviously, if you're due running the blood pressure 160, 170 continuously, it is going to hurt your kidneys. It is going to hurt uh, some of your heart and it is going to hurt brain tissue. And the effects uh, are long lasting and will not. Um, uh, once you start to have damage, you usually cannot recover. Uh, from that depending on how much damage has been done to your end organs. So at any rate, the object is to prevent that, uh, to prevent that uh, end damage in your blood pressure. Um, but it's not so much the absolute numbers as, as I've explained before, it's the difference between the top number and the bottom number. It, it's very important that when you're over the age of 35 to 40, it's the top number minus the bottom number yields pulse pressure. Pulse pressure is the actual force of blood going through your, your arteries. So with that being said, for the most part, as long as you're staying in that under that 150, 160 range, 160 over 20 is the same thing as 150 over 110, is the same thing as 140 over 100, is the same thing as 130 over 90, it's still 40 millimeters of mercury difference between the top number and the bottom number. And that difference is determined a lot by a lot of different things, but when people get focused on that top number, they, they tend to, to freak out. Meaning I'm okay if you have a blood pressure 150 over 110, that's a 40 millimeter pulse pressure. Um, it's not that much destruction, but 150 over 80, well, that's a different story. Okay, that's, that's basically gonna be 80 millimeters of pulse pressure, and that's twice the blood pressure issue of 150 over 110. Twice the issue, twice the damage. Okay, uh, is Roxanne on the phone? Can you hear me? Um, I can't hear her. You, you can? No, still can't hear her. I can hear it in your office, but I can't hear it in mine. So, 
Anyway, maybe we can get Roxanne's call uh, and taken care of here eventually. Technical difficulties, you know, it's just our modern way, world we live in. Uh, I should just be picking up the phone and, and talking to Roxanne, but I'm not. Um, okay, so let's get uh, back to what we were talking. So uh, it, it doesn't matter to me what that blood pressure is, it's, it, it, as long as it, the pulse pressure is not wide. And I can explain it another way that when we're young, our blood vessels are very compliant. They're like a thin hose. They can expand and they can contract, expand and contract. So as our, let's suppose you eat a lot of salt and you uh, basically are out uh, running, you know, drink a lot of water, your, your volume is going to go up, meaning you're going to hold on to that water. Well, your blood vessels can just expand to accommodate that and the blood pressure never changes over different volume. Uh, but it does when your blood vessels are basically constricted, meaning they don't expand. So that's a relative constriction, meaning when you're young, your blood vessels are nice and loose. It's like, you know, silly putty type of thing. But when you're older, they get a, you know, a little harder, they're a little firmer, and they just don't stretch very well. So now you've got to increase more volume, basically, through a tighter hose. And it's tighter because it cannot stretch to accommodate the extra volume. Now, there is a physics formula for that. Actual hard science says that velocity, V, equals... 1 over the diameter to the third power. Now, that sounds very, you know, mathematically oriented. Not everybody does that. But let's just say that basically I take a 4-inch tube and then I take it down to a 2-inch tube. And i got to get the same volume through the 2-inch tube that I tried to get through the 4-inch tube in the same time. And what do I have to do? And I decreased it by a half. So... 2 raised to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. That means I have to increase the velocity 8 times to get the same volume through a 2-inch hose and a 4-inch as opposed to a 4-inch hose in the same time. So you can see that that's why blood pressure tends to do one of these things as we get older. It separates the top number and the bottom number because we have to increase the volume at a time, we, we're basically getting the same volume through a, through a much more narrow hose. So that's why pulse pressure is so important because it determines what that, what that necessary pressure is to get that blood through that hose or through that tube. So uh, when you take your blood pressure, don't worry about it. It's always going to change and you should do this for yourself. It's really pretty interesting. Uh, as I look at blood pressures with patients that come in all the time, you know, they'll say, oh, it's 150 over whatever, 153 over, uh, let's say, 93. And then they'll do 143 over 83. Or, you know, you can just see that within, it's just like boom, boom, boom. They're all maintaining the same pulse pressure. And that pulse pressure, again, is the destructive force of our blood vessels. Do you want to get hit on a way, you're standing on the beach, you want to get, uh, pounded by a three-foot wave or an eight-foot wave. Do you want 30 millimeters of pulse pressure or do you want 80 millimeters of pulse pressure? So you can start to see the destructive force between a really high pulse pressure over time. And that's where we start to see that. So not to confuse you on, on, on blood pressure, but subtract the number from the bottom number, top number, and as long as you're, you're within 50, 55 if you're older, um, and it's almost an age related to your age. I mean, I think you could almost say it's kind of like diabetes. Uh, take your average uh, blood sugar, take your age divided by 10. That should be your high water mark for your average blood sugar. Um, probably your pulse pressure might be the same, except I think I would kind of cap it at about 70. Um, and if you're 30, you should have 30 millimeters of pulse pressure. If you're 40, it should be 40. 50 should be uh, 50, and that pretty much will detect what will happen over time with your blood vessels. Um, but those people that run 170 over 90, 170 over 80 are really in trouble because that's a very high, uh, that's called, that's a term called isolated systolic hypertension. Um, and that basically is meaning it's isolated, the top number is, is elevated, the bottom number remains within a normal range. And that's a dangerous condition, and we have to use a lot of medication to uh, combat that. So, 
Anyway, uh, if you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to call in. Uh, I guess we're going to uh, get ready to go into the last segment of the show. And if you, Ray, if you have any other questions or anybody does, uh, it's a good time to uh, call in. I think at the break I'll be able to get Roxanne's question. Um, and when we come back, hopefully he'll put that K, um, the KPVM uh, login so you can uh, look at some of the um, um, other uh, sections or some of the other the other shows that are on there. Um, and uh, one of the other things I always like to talk about is walking after you eat uh, and what good thing that was. Uh, had a good patient in today uh, who basically uh, says she keeps gaining, gaining weight. And uh, she said, I walked 10,000 steps. I mean, she actually had the pedometer meter uh, where she was, a pedometer meter where she was actually walking 10,000 steps. But what did she do? She did that all day long. She did not eat at all until the evening. From 6.30 to 7.30, she would eat. And guess what she did after she ate? She sat. She vegetated. Pretty obvious. Uh, all those calories went to fat. So... Uh, you can't lose weight if you're not active. Think about kids, uh, and at least some kids when I were growing up. Why are kids that are active so thin? Because they eat and play. Uh, when we were growing up, our mothers would kick us out of the house so she could clean the kitchen. Uh, we would go outside and play. I mean, we worked off our meal. We ate, and then we went and worked it off. So we were thin. As we get older, we eat and we sit. Uh, and uh, so I've always told patients, don't plan on a meal unless you know you can get up and do some type of physical activity after you eat. Uh, it's very, very important. Uh, so I think we're probably getting ready to go to break. Uh, so is it time to, uh, to do that? So anyway, we'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> 